Dr. Faith Walters received the call from the Lord to begin a ministry that would empower individuals for success in the kingdom of God. And Lord God, we thank you for being such a great God. Lift we thank you for being a loving God, a gracious Welcome God. Welcome to Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. Located in Mount Vernon, New York, and online at wamo.org. Join Apostle Dr. Faith Walters, live on Sundays and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. for divine service, empowerment, worship, prayer, words of encouragement, Bible education, fellowship and more. This broadcast is a production of WAMO Media Network. Thank you for joining us. If you want to support this ministry, please subscribe, like, share this video, and leave a comment. It's easy and will cost you nothing. If you want to donate, please visit www.wamo.org forward slash give. You can watch our services via our website, live.wamoe.org, on television via Carib Vision, at caribvision.tv, and on the YouTube and Facebook apps. You are the Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for joining us for the continuation of this episode. Please enjoy the program and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. The word that I'll be sharing today is coming from Psalm 92, verses 1 to 8. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm going to read the word. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name. And it says, Psalm 92, it's reading from the New King James Version. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night on an instrument of ten strings, on the loop and on the harp, Holy Spirit of God, with a harmonious sound. For you, Lord, have made me glad through your work. I will triumph in the works of your hands. O oh Lord, how great are your works. Your thoughts are very deep. A senseless man does not know, nor does a fool understand this. When the wicked spring up like grass, and all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they may be destroyed forever. But you, Lord, are on high evermore. I'm just grateful for this word on this afternoon. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm just grateful to just to know that as the psalmist is saying uh, that we ought to give thanks unto the Lord. You know, it's it's so funny as we, we uh, we're ending the month of November and it's it's a month that's set aside as a day of symbolizing that we should to reflect and to be thankful for something thankful to the lord thankful for life to be thankful just have a of a heart of things given what for the saints of god every day we get up is a day of thanksgiving. It's a day uh, of praise. It's a day of glory. It's a day of rejoicing. Hallelujah. So uh, as we were uh, uh, reflecting at our Thanksgiving meal with the family, with some of our family members, um, if we were asked to give one thing, uh, what we're thankful for other than life, health, and strength, and family, and it made me start to think and ponder about a lot of things that I can be thankful for. It made me go deep into my thoughts and, you know, and go, go beyond the surface, go beyond the comfort zone. Hallelujah. And just really go into really understanding what we should be thankful for. Hallelujah. So I was able to pin uh, uh, some thoughts and the Holy Spirit said to share this with others. So others will do the same thing. Sit down and pin your thoughts with the topic today. What am I thankful for? Hallelujah. What are you thankful for today? 
I know we have life, health, and strength. That's a given. Holy Spirit of God. But think of some other things in your life. You ever take the time to really sit down and pen some, some thoughts about what you're thankful for? We look at so many things happening in our lives, looking at so many things happening in our environment, you know, and we, we focus so much on the negative, focus so much on what we can see, but yet remains. Take that time. Say thank you. Thank you that I'm still here. Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. The songwriter, the, the, the psalmist says, it's good to give thanks to the Lord. It's good to sing praises to his name. Yes. To let others know about his love and kindness. In the morning. And his consistent faithfulness every night. In Lamentation 3, 23, 22, 23 says, Great is God's faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. Holy oh, Spirit of God. The psalmist went on to say, Even on an instrument of a harp, ten strings, whatever you're doing, on a loop, Holy oh, Spirit, of, anything with harmonious sounds, a shaker, a tambourine, a drum, something that gives that reverence to God. Hallelujah. The psalmist goes on to say, for Lord, you make us glad to everything that you do for us. Your work, your tribe, you make us glad through your work, the way you made us. So unique. So different. Holy Spirit of God. And he said, I triumph. I'm great. I feel wonderful in the works of your hands. Look how unique I am made. And I'm triumphant in that. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. He said, your thoughts, your great your works and your thoughts. Yes, they're very deep. And I, 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 verse 6 says, a senseless man, a man who does not understand. Though does a fool understand? In Psalm 14, verse 1 says, uh, it only a fool says in his heart, there is no God. You can never understand the depth of who God is. Hallelujah. Only a foolish man will say there is no God. So I'm sorry for the one that's an atheist today, the one that's an agnostic, the one who believe in half of this and half of that and separate one from the other. I'm sorry for that one. I'm sorry for those who accept God or accept Jesus. The last time I checked, Jesus is the only way to gain eternal life unto the Father. It's come to, you have to come through Jesus Christ to come to the Father. Bless the name of Jesus. So I'm sorry for those who don't accept him. Hallelujah. You're missing out on somebody great. Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We can spring up like grass and the workers of iniquity flourish. But they may be destroyed. Yes. They will be. They, they will be out there in other darkness. Gone. But at the end, he said, but you, Lord, always on high, consistently, infinitely, you never stop. You're always there no matter what. Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. So I am just, I just, these are some thoughts I'm going to share with you as I, as I, as I talk about the word. These are thoughts that came to my mind of how grateful I am and how thankful I am for God in my life. Thank God I can reflect on his goodness. 
can reflect on his love and his grace towards us. Hallelujah. I can reflect on what he has done in my life. What he's done already and what he's about to do for me. I can't, I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for that. And what I hope, what's already done and I hope for what he's about to do. Bless the name of Jesus. I'm so grateful to the Lord today. He is a great God. He's a powerful God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I'm able to write down my thoughts and, and I'm thankful that, that I can connect to some scriptures. Hallelujah. Bring It can help you to adapt. It can help you if you become concerned or worried. These thoughts that you write down can bring back to bring you back to a place of calmness and peace. So you take some time to pin your thoughts. But if you're feeling down and you're feeling lost and you're feeling lonely and you're feeling empty, go back to that book or those sheets of paper that you wrote down. What am I thankful for? So you can be reminded of how good God is. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The first thing that I'm thankful for is the Lord being the head of my life. Hallelujah. He is my joy, my peace, my all in all. He gave me the gift of salvation, which is Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for that on today. I'm thankful that I came into the full knowledge of him. I grew up in church, yes, and I knew about God. But I didn't know him as who he is now. I'm glad I'm able to acknowledge him fully as Savior and Lord. I'm so thankful for that. And it doesn't, and number two, it doesn't matter how I'm feeling. I'm thankful that I could go to him in prayer. Hallelujah. And talk to him about what's on my heart. What's in my spirit, what's on my mind. The word of God says in, in Psalm 37 verse 4, when we delight ourselves in him, he will grant us the desires of our heart. So whatever I'm feeling, whatever thoughts I may have, good or bad and, or, or indifferent. I'm able to go to him in prayer. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that he listens. And he may not answer my prayer right away. Some I got to wait on. But some, some of them he answers right away. And I'm thankful. And even if I'm still waiting for some of the prayers to be answered, it's okay. I'm still thankful. I'm thankful that if you don't have mother or father or sister or brother or a friend to turn to, you can always pray. You could always look to the hills. You could always lift up your hands and say, Lord, I need you. Lord, help me. You can always do that. Go to him in prayer. In verse Thessalonians 5, said, he said, pray without ceasing. Don't stop talking to me because I'm there for you. Praise God. Number three, that I can encourage myself in the word of God. How many of us can encourage ourselves? Some of us don't love ourselves. I'm thankful that when I was a little girl, I, I didn't love me. And I'm thankful that he taught me. When I came into the full knowledge of him, he taught me how to love me. Holy Spirit of God. And that even if I have nobody else around me, I can encourage, encourage myself to say, you know what, Faith, you got this. Hallelujah. 
I can encourage myself, open them the word of God and reading something that will soothe my heart, to soothe my mind and soothe my spirit if I'm feeling discouraged. Because even being a minister of God, sometimes you can get discouraged. We are human. But I'm glad I can go to the word of God. I'm very thankful for that. And understanding enough that he, the Lord will give me clarity. So even if you don't even understand the word, you ask God, Lord, I need to understand this verse. Understand the scripture. I've gone to read some scriptures that I've memorized and put them to memory. So if I'm feeling lost or feeling like I'm disconnected from something, I'm thankful I can bring the word back to my memory. Praise God to remind me where God brought me from. Bless the name of Jesus. Thought number four. I'm thankful that he healed me from my past hurt and childhood trauma. He delivered me from emotional, mental, physical abuse, abandonment, anger, as I said before, low self-esteem, low confidence, having suicidal ideations and attempting it. As a little girl, I'm thankful that he saved my life, that he healed my mind, that I could be here today to share with you he know what he was doing. I didn't understand life. I didn't want to live. I didn't feel like I was loved. But he loved me enough to save me. Take that little girl, Faith, and say, daughter, I got you. I got you. I'm teaching you to love you. He delivered me from that. I asked him for deliverance. And he delivered me. Thank God. He delivered me from an abusive, toxic marriage. Within the roots of a strict religious environment. With many misinterpretations of the Bible. Took me out of this marriage. If I had stayed there, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I'm thankful that he took me out and the scars are there, but the scars only made me better. Didn't make me bitter. Praise the name of Jesus. And it has helped me to empower others to greatness. Holy Spirit of God. And thankful that he gave me a heart of forgiveness and having empathy for others. Having a heart of forgiveness was a powerful thing. It took a while, but I had to learn how to forgive because if I didn't forgive, I realized that my life would not go anywhere. I'll be stuck. I'll be so stuck in where I'm at. I had to let go. I didn't forget what happened to me. Because I didn't want it to repeat itself. Bless the name of Jesus. But I forgave. Do you know how you know that you're forgiven? When you could be around that person. And your heart don't get all angry and stir up. You're at peace. That's how you know you forgave that person. I've forgiven many people. I've learned empathy to look at where they're coming from and to understand where, where, where they were and, and why they could not do the right thing. But Lord, I'm thankful that he gave me the gift of empathy. Praise the name of Jesus. And these are powerful uh, 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 thoughts because it took a You know, but didn't take too long, but little by little, gradually, I started peeling away all the pain as more you kept peeling away the pain. 
things got better. And forgiveness came forth. Hallelujah. The eighth thought, thought that despite the toxic relationship I was in, God gave me three wonderful children, two boys and a girl. They're now ages 36, 35, and 31. And they're quite successful in their careers of choice. And I tell you, it was not an easy process. Being a single married woman, then being a single woman to raise three children without any support, any family connection. And it was God that helped me to raise these children. And I'm thankful that in spite of all what transpired, all the negativity, all the, the different things that were said, that they wouldn't have made it. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. But thank God. Thankful to the Lord that if they've escaped alcohol, drug abuse, thank you, Jesus. Never been to prison. Holy Spirit of God. No baby mama drama. I'm just thankful to the Lord for that. I'm thankful, you know, that it could have went the other way. But I'm thankful that I opened up my heart to him and asked him to teach me how to raise my children. Because I couldn't have done it by myself. Children don't come with manuals. And I know a lot of single mothers out there. They're trying their best to raise their children. It's not easy. I'm sharing with you today from a mother to a mother. I'm thankful that they escaped a lot of the world and what the world is doing with our young men and young women today. I'm saying this to you if you give God ask him to help you to raise your children they don't have to go to prison they don't have to be on drugs they don't have to be on alcohol I call situation they don't have to have 20 children from the age of 14 to 15. No, they don't have to. Your daughters don't have to go through all that. And mothers, share with you. I'm just letting the Holy Spirit just guide me. That it's not easy. But when you ask Jesus for help, he will help you. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I was reminiscing one day when I saw in 2003 how my children it turned out. It turned out good. And the Lord brought me back to a memory. He brought me back to something I completely forgot about. I did not remember when I was 17 years old. I was in my parents' home. And I said, God, I didn't even know who God is. I didn't even understand him. I was going to churches, but I didn't know who God is. 
thought he was a mean God. I didn't know he was a loving God. And I stood up in that house and I said, God, if I ever have children, I never had any children. I didn't know when I was going to be married or single. I was 17. And I said, God, if I ever have children, teach me how to raise them. Because I didn't want him to be raised like how I was raised. And I forgot about it, people. I forgot about what I said. I completely forgot about it because I was going through so much emotionally. And I was sitting there in 2003 lying in my bed just thinking about and just thanking God for my children escaping things. The Lord just unwinded my thoughts. He just brought me back to be standing in my parents' home at such a young age. He said, you have forgotten, but I didn't forget. So that, that, I'm saying this to you, that no matter where you are at this time in your life, some of you right now, you're probably already pregnant man that made you pregnant is no longer there. And some of you are saying I'm too young to take care of a child. I'm too young to have this baby. You may be thinking about abortion. You may be thinking about I gotta end this. Say, I can't do this. I got my life ahead of me. There's some of the things I desire to do in my life and this baby is just going to be a hindrance. No, no. I'm saying to you, no, no, no. Understand that having a child is a gift. God does not like the sin, but he loves the child. The child is precious to him. And even though some have gotten pregnant through violence, it's still your choice if you want to bring this baby forth. And some have brought it forth in spite of how it was conceived. And God has helped them through the process. It's not easy. It's not an easy decision because some of them are children. Whatever you desire, whatever your thoughts, but God is saying, those who are conscious, those who are conscious of what you're doing you know what you what you when you lie down with that man you know it was going to take place if you didn't protect yourself i'm just going by the holy spirit you knew what was going to happen taking that baby's life is not the answer i don't know if a lot of you ever think about watch a video or watch a clip what abortion does to the lining what it does to the lining of the uterus what it does to a baby when it rips them apart from limb to limb a vacuum something just just ripping the child apart Think about that. Some of y'all are waiting until you're 40 years old, 50 years old, and then you're struggling to have a child. But yet when you were young, when you were in your 20s or 30s, or God forbid, sometime in your teens, you had that baby. You went somewhere, secretly aborted it. Some gave it up, some had it, had it and gave it up for adoption, which is fine. 
And sometimes you get into your upper ages and you, you're not allowed to have, you, you, you're not able to have any more children. And you think about that one. And there's some women who have had three and four and five abortions. Why? And when you decide to have a child, it's hard. Because you've done it so many times. Why should God give you another one? So whatever you're thinking about, let the Lord lead you. Remember, children are a gift from the Lord. So I'm thankful. I didn't hurt mine. I could have. Because it was hard. It was a struggle raising them by myself. But because I asked God, and sometimes I didn't understand what I was doing. I wasn't sure about a lot of things I was doing. But God helped me through. And he can help you through, young woman. And a young man who's made those children. Take time. Spend time with those children. Don't let that woman take you to court to force you to take care of your child. If you made them babies, go find a job. Go take care of those babies. Because those babies need both parents. I'm just thankful that God helped me through. And I didn't harm my babies. I could have. Like many mothers have done. Because when, when, when it get beca it becomes overwhelming, and it does. The finance is hard. The, 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 the dealing with the, the, the emotions and the, the hormonal changes and everything is going on. It's hard. It was hard. And I could have ended it if I wanted to. But no. God has been there for me. He's helped me through the struggles. He's helped me through the pain. He's helped me through everything I needed to get them where they had to go. So even if you don't even have the knowledge, he'll give it to you. He'll teach you how to read so you can teach your child how to read. I'm just be led by the spirit. If you don't know how to write, the law will teach you how to write. He will send help. So it doesn't matter what's going on. Life is precious. Life is precious. And you don't know if that one child that you decide to discard is that will be the only child you'll ever have. And that child will be a blessing unto you. So understand that when God gives you life and give it the ability to, to give life, be thankful for that gift. Because some people, some couples desire it to happen. And it doesn't ha it hasn't happened for them. So be thankful. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 When you're raising those children, ask the Lord to help you to raise those children. Don't spare the rod. If you spare the rod, you will spoil, spoil them. Proverbs 22, 6. Read the word of God. And when, you're, when you are disciplined, then let them understand why you're disciplining them. And give them rules, rewards, and consequences. And don't overdo things with your children. Let the Lord teach you how to raise them. He will and he can. But you've got to allow him to do that. And when you, you have 12 years to raise your children, that 13 year or 14 year, it's pretty much what you put in them 
in those 12 years. And yes, a lot of them go off with their friends. And their friends are going to be the ones that's dictated to them how they should live their lives. And you're still the parent. And you still got to do what you got to do for them. But don't overdo anything. I remember at 13 and 14 years old, my children's lives, I said, Lord, you got this. I became their facilitator. I, I became their guide. I gave them back to God. According to 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 22, with Anna, she asked God for a child, a boy. And she said, I will weed him and give him back to you. Give him back to the Lord. So I was able at a young age to, when they were young, to give him back to the Lord and allow the Lord to have his way. And yes, they have wandered far away from God. I've taught them the word because the Bible says ministry begins at home. So I teach them the word of God. I read to them. I let them understand what Jesus says about salvation. He talks about sin. I let them understand that. I didn't leave up to the church to raise my children. A lot of people do that. Ministry begins at home. Everything that the child needs begins with you as the parent. It's your responsibility to read the word of God to your child. It's your responsibility. It's not the church, it's not the school system. It's your responsibility to teach the child what a child knows. The foundation level is your responsibility. And if you can't do it, ask for help. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And at such a young age, I was able to give them, I said, Lord, they're yours. And they have fallen. They're older and they have gone their ways, doing what they want to do. But you know what I do as a mother? Because I know I raised them. I don't worry about them. I don't try to get involved in their lives and I, 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 and control their every thoughts and their thinking and tell them what what they should not do they know i'm here if they want to talk to me but i leave it to god because i i gave god full control over their lives and i know in time is once i continue to keep praying i know one day that they will surrender their lives to the lord they would say yes to his will, yes to his way. So I'm thankful I can let go and let God have his way. Hallelujah. In their lives. They're adults and God is doing his work. He's working in their lives. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I'm thankful that I can let it go. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Thankful to you, Lord. Thankful to you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. And God, I, 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 I'm thankful that as time go on, this ministry, I could be able to, to transfer this ministry to one of my children that's in my spirit it's in my prayer and i believe in the word of god that it will happen in in god's timing not mine so i'm thankful and i'm patient enough in prayer that it will happen holy spirit of god i'm so thankful the lord gave me the, 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 the knowledge and the mindset to pursue an education <clears throat> to help to teach and empower students with special needs. The Lord allowed me to uh, uh, um, have a job and taught in the school system over 20 years and to help to empower many young minds to love themselves, to, to 
uh, 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 um, encourage them to greatness. I remember in our first years of teaching, our children can lift up their hands in the classroom and say hallelujah. But after a while, those things change. Sometimes my children, my students will say thank you Jesus in the classroom. But after a while, as time progressed, they could not do that anymore. But I'm thankful to the Lord that he gave me the knowledge to teach and to help to advance these children and to let them feel good about themselves. Because many of them were, were in front of me. Many of them were lost. Many of them... They were given up on by their family members, given up on by society, given up on by the school. They're in these special classes. And some, many of them were sitting in the class just drawing and doodling on paper, not really using their full potential. They believe because they have special needs, they can't function normally. But I'm thankful that the Lord opened that doorway for me to reach those children and to help them to understand that they have what it takes to be somebody in society. Bless the name of Jesus. Some of them couldn't read. Some of them didn't know how to copy from the board to a book. But the Lord used me to help them. Some have just came to school for the first time at nine years old. It was only there for two or three months. But I worked with the child. Did they be able to read a sentence and to see a smile on their face? I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful. That he has given me the courage to stand up, to let these children know you can make it. You can be somebody. You are somebody. Let them know you must learn at a different pace. But you can go to college. You can go to trade school. You could do something with your life. Because there's greatness in you holy spirit of god there was greatness in them and it was through that classroom that's working with special needs students they encouraged me to pen these thoughts of poems about my self-esteem hallelujah bless the name of jesus so i helped them to push them to greatness. Was well, to show I could do this. I shared my experience. I shared my life experiences. And that helped to bring them to where they are. And each one that leave my class, whether it's elementary, middle, or high school, one person came back and said, thank you, Miss Walters, for changing my life. Thank you. Everything you said about the next grade, the following uh, middle school or high school where I was getting into. It was just the way you said it. I'm just thankful to the Lord that he gave me that knowledge to help them. I wasn't even sure in myself if I was able to do this. But God gave me the courage. Watching. Please join us next time for the continuation of this episode. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us today. We invite you to come back again and join Apostle Faith Live on Sundays at 2 p.m. for Bible education and church services, and Wednesdays at 2 p.m. for Feature Wednesdays, where we share messages from other kingdom leaders from within the WAMO network. Are you a kingdom leader with a message of hope and inspiration for the children of God? 
Send us an email with your message to support at wamo.org or join the Wamo Media Network via our website, wamo.org forward slash network. Are you in need of prayer? Email prayer requests to support at wamo.org or join our prayer line, Monday mornings at 7 a.m. Lord God, we thank you for being such a great God. We thank you for being a loving God, a gracious God. If you need help to overcome low self-worth, heal your marriage, restoration through therapy for children, teens, individuals, and couples, book an appointment for therapy with Dr. Faith at our website, wamo.org forward slash counseling. You may also access self-help resources at our website, wamo.org forward slash resources. If you would like to become a member, volunteer, or partner with WAMO Outreach Ministries, send your email to support at wamo.org. Come as you are. Why you should join this ministry. 1. To empower people for success in the Kingdom of God through Bible education. 2. To provide support services for the upliftment and development of your community. 3. To empower children and youth to increase their knowledge and earning potential by advancing their skills and professional capacity. 4. To provide solutions for families who need shelter, a place for worship, skills development, and access growth opportunities for community leaders. And 5. To provide support and a source of hope for senior citizens, ex-convicts, and people in need. It's easy to support this ministry, here is how you can help. Through tax-deductible giving, easily accessible everywhere via our website, at wamo.org forward slash give. You can give a one-time or monthly donation, or contribute funding to one of our programs. Become a member of our community or volunteer team, apply at our website, at wamo.org forward slash membership. Become a member of our network, and let us work together, to build and grow a strong, healthy community of Kingdom Advocates. Empowering people for success in the kingdom of God. Sign up at our website, wamo.org forward slash network. Other ways to join us and support the ministry. Subscribe on YouTube at Wamo Ministries, Apostle Faith Live. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Wamo Ministries. Contact us anytime at Women and Men of Excellence Outreach Ministries. P.O. Box 2077 Mount Vernon, New York 10551 Telephone, 914-699-2482 and email support at wamo, w-a-m-o-e, dot org Your support and generosity will positively change lives. to the ministry resources and supporters in whatever way the Lord laid on your heart to do that. And we're thankful, we're thankful in advance for your donations and for your support in whatever the way the Lord leads you. And we pray that the words that were spoken today will be an enrichment, enlightenment into your life and your life will continue to Continue to push and to, to grow and to build and to ex- advance to levels unknown. And I thank God that you're able to be with us. And I thank God that this word is a blessing to you. And I thank God for Eileen Smith and Patricia Johnson and Cynthia Winter, Winters Atkins, Yumi Radio. Thank you so much for joining in. But uh, would you say Patricia Johnson? Yes. Thank God for those and others who are, who are on YouTube. Thank you again for joining in. And as we say, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you. And don't forget to be thankful. Thankful for everything that God has done for you. And know that I love you and Jesus loves you more.